So we are still speaking to the CEO of Edel Technologies, Ethel Kofi, on business today. And we are going to delve into women in technology. Ethel, tell me, I know you have you founded the Women in Technology Ghana or Africa. What instigated this move? Right. So I learned a very long time ago that being a female in technology meant that you were one of the only few women in the room and that there was sometimes a tendency for people to think that to think that you are not um, competent because of your gender. Um, and so I started uh, with about 72 women in Ghana just as a way for us to learn from each other, to share opportunities and sometimes to learn how to deal with these issues. Um, we started with 72 women in Ghana and we're now in over 30 countries worldwide. Uh, we have physical chapters in Ghana, Nigeria, Kenya, in London, um, and then I think we launched South Africa in September. So we're it just started out as a small project uh, and, then we, and then we really saw that there was a need for women, especially in, in, in our sector, to, to grow their leadership skills, to, to have opportunities, share opportunities with, uh, with each other, but also to go out there and positively affect their community. Right? So one of the things we do outside of the, uh, helping the women in technology is we take the skill sets and the women in our groups and we go out and we train entrepreneurs on how to use technology to grow their business. We, um, we in collaboration with the Africa Technology Business Network in London, has just won a grant from the um, DFID to be able to train women, um, starting from Ghana and hopefully across Africa, train entrepreneurial women on design thinking, on technology and how to build their businesses. That's great. Okay, so Azaida, what are some of the challenges um, I know you face and you still face being a woman in the technology field? Um, like I mentioned before, um, sometimes you walk into a room and it's, ah, so you are the CEO of the company. And obviously you can tell that they are on short whether they or not they want to, to give you the project. Um, and I mean, there are, I think women in different sectors, especially a sector that is male dominated, always have to deal with, uh, not in all circumstances, but have to deal with sexism and, and, and things like that. Um, there's also... I always, that I always try and put these things into two groups. The things that we do to ourselves and the things that are done to us. So things like sexism, things like people not believing you are capable because you're a woman. These are things that are done to us. And, and then there are things that we do to ourselves, which sometimes come from cultural uh, backgrounds, right? So how do women um, go into a room or go into a boardroom and own a boardroom? How do you go up the steps in your career and do it the right way, right? How do you ensure that sometimes there, so there's sometimes there are things like you know women are emotional and things like that when you're in a situation how do you deal with that situation how do you deal with when you go to a boardroom meeting and somebody is talking over you because maybe the person might not respect what you're saying how do you deal with that situation and deal with it professionally right so there are different things that happen and, and different ways of dealing with them and sometimes and i was telling somebody the other day sometimes it's, it's just you need somebody who's been there to tell you how to deal with it. And, and, that's, and that's what the group is about. Oh, okay, so the group helps them to overcome all these fears and challenges. Right, and we do leadership programs and training programs, and, and then we help with mentorship. So um, a week ago, I had a really frantic email from a, a young lady from Kenya. Uh, she had just, she's finished school, she, she's really good at a number of things, she did tech, but she's not sure what to do, right? So I sent an email out to our members and I said, look, anybody in Kenya who wants to mentor this girl? Well, people that lifted their hands up. So this is, this is what we do, we help each other to, to grow. So with what you do, do you feel fulfilled? And then how far you have come? I think I am living out my purpose. That's, that's what I believe. I believe that, um, that everyone is put here for a purpose and, and being in technology is one of my purposes, but also helping women grow in that field is, is one of my purposes in life. And I think we're getting there. So how is women empowerment settling in technology? I think it's better than it used to be a couple of years ago. So now there is a lot of awareness right, about the fact that we need more women. Um, in the field. It's not just because we need women for women's sake, but it's documented that women, uh, organizations that have a balance of men and women in management make 
um, averagely 12 to 20 percent more return on investment right it's been shown that um, companies that have uh, diversity in their development teams end up building more rounded products which people can use Right. So because if you're if you sometimes you've got an all male team building a product, they might not have the perspective of how women would interact with the product or how women would feel with the product. So bottom line, it's good for businesses. Right. And so our job is to ensure that businesses can see this and, and business can find a pipeline of women um, that they can hire. OK, but in your perspective, has, um, you know, the number of women in technology increased? as per you know as compared to the first those times those days now that we are you know instigating women empowerment and all that what do you think has it really increased the numbers have grown so when i left school i had maybe one african woman i can look up to and say oh she's in this field now there are so many mentors and women that people are looking we're not where we need to get to but we've definitely improved we've come far there are more mentors that uh, students in university right now have um, as opposed to um, a few years ago um, so that's a good thing mm. so what are your projections for women in technology in like say a few years to come the way forward so that it won't hinder their growth or development you know I my hope is a few years to come that organizations like mine will not be needed we will not need organizations like mine because we would have diversity, we would have balance, and organizations will, uh, would understand what, what to do. That, that's, I think at the end of the day, that's the ultimate goal. But we wouldn't need women empowerment. We wouldn't need women empowerment organizations because we would have the problems around that would have been solved. How generally, like, what do you um, see technology in Ghana in probably the next few years, aside women? This one, we're not talking about women, like technology in general. What do you foresee? in the next few years do you think we can match up to that level you know in some few years to come or you think we still have a long way to go okay. so here's the thing um i i talking to one of the co-founders of one of the very Ghana's very first software companies and i was complaining that i've just hired two national service people and uh, they are not computer science graduates. One is an economic student who learned how to code and one is a math and stats student who learned how to code. And um, he said, actually, this, is, this, is, this hasn't changed. This is still a problem because our, our universities are churning our computer science graduates that we cannot use. Um, and there are people in other spheres who are actually making the effort. So I think from an educational sector from training I think that we're not doing a great job the organizations like mess that are churning out people that are great but in terms of our universities I don't think that they are helping us become competitive at all because they are not creating the graduates that we need but when we look at the number of IT companies so the numbers have grown from where there were two or three IT companies in Ghana to now where there are thousands and dozens and more people come out of school and start companies um, I think that has improved but um, the, the struggle for me essentially is finding quality talent, right? So I do 100 interviews and maybe I like three people out of them because of the quality, right? So that's something that is not going to allow us to be competitive. And, um, and if we don't fix it, we're going to lag behind everybody else. So Kenya, Rwanda, all these countries actually fixing on an educational level, on a policy level, they're fixing the issues with ensuring that their, company, uh, their, their countries are technology based. Um, and I don't think we are doing a good job. Mm. So what then do you suggest? I think that let's start from our educational. Uh, so we have, Ghana has an ICT policy. Let's start to implement that ICT policy. That's number one. Number two, from, um, from the universities that churn out um, graduates, these, the universities need to actually talk to industry. What do you need? What do you need from the graduates that are coming out of industry? And so that we can find some, some sort of uh, mix. So one of the things that we want to do next year, and we've been thinking really about it, is when um, the graduates are, uh, they are working on their projects, that we interview a few of them and find three or four people that are doing really good projects and actually sponsor them through the period and help them build out those projects and then bring them in after they are done. Because we have we almost have to extend ourselves to be able to find the right skill set and i think that that's in um 
in a world where technology is, is, is running things, it's unfortunate that we're not, we're not planning ahead. Um, so for me, it's, for me, it's policy. And then from, from the universities and the organizations that actually provide us graduates, that they need to provide us graduates that are actually ready for the environment in which they, they come into. So this is still business today with me, Jessica Ayoko Ai. I'm still here with the CEO of Edel Technology, Ethel Kofi, still discussing issues of technology. So um, Ethel, back to you. Um, do you think Ghanaians are embracing technology now as compared to previously? Do you think now we are okay, we are warming up to technology? I think we've always warmed up to technology. Um, if you look at the mobile revolution in Ghana, right? So I always tell the story that in 1999, 1998, when they were talking about Ghana, even Africa as a whole, they were talking about landline penetration and landline per square meter and that sort of thing. And then three things happened, which is one, uh, cheap Nokia phones. Um, the ability was uh, the ability to prepare prepayments for your 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 uh, calls rather than postpaid where it's not a bill at the end of the day but you, your card um, those two things and, and and the third thing being liberalization of the the, the spectrum and be, uh, people being able to buy licenses meant that we went from a country that had a few landlines to a country that has uh, at least in every home a mobile phone where we have over 100 percent penetration we when technology is relevant to us we use it people are using whatsapp to sell people are using facebook um to sell if it's relevant technology we use it i, I think that the argument that Ghanaians don't like to embrace technology i think it's neither here nor there i think that if the technology is relevant to us we will use it um and with the number of people we don't go to youtube to watch videos not a lot of us do but people pass videos on whatsapp yes. right we, when it's relevant to us, we use that. Okay, so um, finally, what would be your advice to the youth who are now coming up, you know, the university graduates who would want to delve into technology, but probably for one or two reasons are scared probably of failure or the other, what advice would you give to them? Invest in your career. Investing in your career sometimes means working for free. I worked for free for a lot of people over time because I was building up my skill sets, right? So invest in your career, learn the things that you need to learn. Don't, it's not the job of your university or your employer to give you the skills that you need. You need to go out there. there right now, there's so many places to go, like Coursera, uh, online learning, Harvard, really, Harvard gives some of the courses free online. Even Stanford does videos of some of their courses and you can go and watch. There's so many opportunities for you to learn. And so invest in your career. Thank you so much, Ethel Kofi. That was Ed, CEO of Edel Technology, Ethel Kofi. Viewers, thank you so much for tuning in. We are grateful that we have come to another end of a beautiful edition of City Business Today. Do have a lovely day.